Hello, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Graham Elwood, and you are watching The Political Vigilante. Deep inside of a cave, somewhere on the outskirts of Gotham, it's The Political Vigilante World Headquarters coming at you with a story by Patreon member Tim Stack. Tim, thank you so much for supporting the show. You, too, can support this show and get bonus content by going to patreon.com slash Graham Elwood. So nobody's driving their cars. Oil prices are low. What are the Saudis doing? Has Saudi Arabia shot itself in the foot with this oil price war? Now, this was back in February. They started an oil price war. And now Corona hit and no one, no one is driving. The air quality in Los Angeles is better than it's been in ever, I think. No one's driving. The planes, no one's driving. The pl there's no planes. There's, the, the, there's far less trucks. The only trucks on the road are like medical supplies and groceries. That's it. <laughs> there's, you know, half the trucks aren't on the road. I mean, I can drive all over Los Angeles in the middle of rush hour in 20 minutes. It's nuts. So I'm going to go into the long, since this was in February, I'm going to see how this is what they shot themselves in the foot. I'm sorry, this was March. The impact of coronavirus has destroyed the demand for oil and neither Saudi Arabia, Russia, or the United States will escape the resulting price war unscathed. Before coronavirus, the world was using less oil. A lot of countries have said, we're putting a off of oil by whatever, 2030, 2035. India said, we're not gonna sell any more gas cars by us, I forget the date. The UK, a lot of countries have said these things. Car companies have said, we're not going to make gas cars anymore, right? So the Saudis, that's their whole power. They've given the United States all the oil we want. We, they buy our weapons and great. We got this never ending supply of oil. They can go set Yemen and kill people on fire and chop up journalists and we won't hold them. They're never, we never call them evil dictators. We never call them, oh, authoritarian, which they are. They are completely authoritarian. Oh, wow, like two years ago, women finally got the right to vote. You know, you can st like stone a woman to death and <laughs> that country's out of its mind. But they're our allies because they give us oil. So that's falling apart. And I talk a lot on this show about the petrodollar, the real reason for things. What's why we're doing things, right? Saudi Arabia made a conscious decision to increase oil production in order to avert a potential oil price collapse. The move sent an already flattening global economy into a tailspin. The trouble began at the beginning of March after Russia rejected ultimatum from Saudi Arabia to cut oil production in light of falling prices. Oh, the story little backstory on that now. Graham, what, is this, why, what does this have to do with Syria? I've talked about this before. Russia and Iran have been wanting to build a pipeline from Iran through Syria to Western Europe, which is one of the biggest oil markets in the world. Syria said yes to that. Assad. He said no to America and Saudi Arabia's pipeline. So that's when Assad became a terrorist. Butchers his people, gasses his own people, which we know was a lie. Not that Assad is a nice guy, but did he really gas his own people? No, we concocted that whole story for an oil pipeline. If Assad get, let us have the pipeline, he would be our ally in the region and a friend, and he could, fucking, he, could, he could set puppies on fire on national TV and nobody would give a shit because he gave us his oil. Russia built the pipeline. I'm going to go into this with China. China stopped using the petrodollar, used the petro yuan. That's what this is all about. And Saudi has been scrambling, scrambling. Saddam Hussein stopped using the petrodollar. Hmm, we invaded him. Gaddafi stopped using the petrodollar. Hmm, we killed him. Hillary laughed about it. The Saudi response was to effectively flood the oil market with an additional 2.6 million barrels a day at dramatically discounted price. There's a history behind this. 
Between 81 and 85, the kingdom cut oil production drastically in light of rising supply from the North Sea, Siberia, and Mexico. When the move amounted to little benefit, Saudi Arabia slashed their prices and increased production. Oil's trading at about 30 bucks a barrel right now. Have you noticed your gas prices are really low? Part of it is nobody's, I mean, the main reason is nobody's driving because of the quarantine, but they, they, they started this tactic beforehand and it's, it, they, did it, they picked the exact worst moment to do it. It did the same in November 2014 after asking Russia to cut oil production, leading to yet another depression in the oil industry. They're starting to panic. Saudi Arabia Deputy Economic Minister said if we don't take any reform measures and if the global economy stays the same, then we're doomed to bankruptcy in three to four years. The statement was a telling indication that the Saudi leadership was well aware of the devastating consequences of such a strategy. And they know this. The fossil fuel industry knows this. If the whole world pivots off of oil, which it absolutely needs to do to save itself from complete climate collapse, Saudi Arabia has no value. Who cares about their, their, their oil, their pipeline, or anything? I mean, we won't need to, like, sanction Venezuela and Iran, two countries we're sanctioning in the middle of a pandemic, which are essentially killing more of their citizens because we won't let I, those countries have medical supplies. That's how awful and evil America is. Excuse me. Saudi Arabia announced this week that it would reduce government expenditures by $13.2 billion or close to 5% of its budget spending for 2020. Really? I didn't think the Saudis ever had to worry about money for I think they just spent whatever they did whenever they wanted to. They're just, that's why they invaded the poorest country in the history of the world, Yemen, that we let them do and we refueled their planes and they used American munitions to blow them. Yeah. Humanitarian crisis. That happened under Obama. Still going on today. Wait. U.S. military building presence in Saudi Arabia for first time in 17 years. There's Mike Pompeo smiling. Ah, ha, ha. Isn't it great that we're evil? Oh, hey, diversity. Female security guard. Amid rising tensions with Iran, the U.S. military is building its presence in Saudi Arabia with, with 2,500 new troops at the Prince Sultan Air Base. We're stacking up troops to guard their oil. We want to try to invade Iran. We've been talking about that for years. I've been talking since last spring. Watch out. All those false flags started stacking up. We're still sanctioning them in a pandemic. We're hoping Iran, Iran does something horrible and so we can say, oh, we got to invade them. We're trying to box them into a corner. It's awful. Economists are expecting Saudi Arabia's budget deficit to grow significantly from 4.7% of its GDP in 2019 to well into the double digits. So Saudi Arabia is starting to go under. And we need to have more military there in case they do. That doesn't look good. The International Monetary Fund, IMF, good group of folks, little mom and pop credit union, has said... Riyadh needs oil at 80 a barrel in order to balance its current 2020 budget. Fitch Ratings goes one step further and assesses that the kingdom will need oil prices at 91 a barrel. Right now it's trading at about 30. They need it at minimum 80 bucks a barrel. The other group says 91, so we're between 80 and 91 dollars a barrel. So we're talking a 50 to 60 dollar per barrel shortfall. That's a lot. Russia is in a stronger financial and political leadership position than its Saudi counterpart. According to oil price, Russia's budget break-even price is $40 a, a, a barrel and can produce over 11 million barrels per day without facing many repercussions. Again, I said this before, all of our sanctions by Obama against Russia, Putin's evil, Putin's evil, again, not excusing anything Putin's ever done, but he's... He's not evil. He just won't play ball with us. What, what Putin did with all of our sanctions? Okay. 
We're going to start making everything internally, growing our own food, making our own products, getting our own oil, and sell it to China. We don't need you. We don't need the Saudi Arabia. We don't need the, we don't need the Middle East. We don't need America's nonsense. That's why when COVID hit, they sealed their borders. Their medicines and products and medical supplies are all made. They're not scrambling. Oh, we don't have enough masks. We don't have ventilators. What do we do? Our medicines are all made in China. What do we do? They share a board with China. They lock the border. Boom. They got everything. And they've been foreseeing this collapse of the American empire and this collapse of Saudi Arabia. That's why they got in a bed with China. That's why we keep saying China and Russia are bad. That's why Biden, during the debates against Bernie, was like, how can you say that about China and blah, 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 blah. And why Bernie had to go, evil Russia. We need Russia and China. And I'm, again, I'm not saying China isn't authoritarian or any of that stuff, but it's about the oil. It's about us losing our dominance as an empire. And we could be working with all these people to stop this pandemic and get off of oil to save the planet. And it would, could be amazing. We could live in this, 20 years from now, we could live on this amazing planet where there's just like, sustainability and clean air and no more war and every, everyone's taken, the whole planet's taken care of. We could live that way. We could live that way, but capitalism won't allow it. Capitalism has to kill people so that a couple of fat jackasses at the top get all the money. Twenty twenty one Pentagon budget request hints at Russia and China as the new focus of U.S. empire. That's what I just said. It's because of oil. The Pentagon is shifting its strategy, budget, and arsenal to focus on confrontation with Russia and China. Because Russia and China are like, we don't need you anymore. They just did this. Pakistan, China, Russia decide to conduct trade in local currencies to skip dollars. This got ratified on the 18th. I did a video on that. So they stopped using the petrodollar, and now they use the petro yuan. When Russia and China, when China trades oil with anybody, like this pipeline, this is the Siberian pipeline. These are projected pipelines, Russia into China. This pipeline's already operational. So is that one. That's what this is about. And they're doing this? Are they using the petrodollar? Nope. Using the petro yuan, using China's currency to trade. That's why we need them to be the big bad guys. That's why we need, that's why we're ramping up our budget because they are circumventing us. They're trading, this isn't just oil. This is trading, trade in local currencies to skip dollars. They're trading just good services in all these Central Asian countries. Saudi Arabia, Russia strike deal to reduce oil production amid market tumult reports. This happened on the 9th. This was critical. It lowers the tensions for a war immediately right now. And, but this was like, it shows you this is all about oil. Trump tweeted out, the big oil deal with APEC plus is done. This will save hundreds of thousands of energy jobs in the United States. I would like to thank and congratulate Putin, Solomon Assad. I just spoke with them from the Oval Office. Great deal for all. That's what just happened. So in the middle of pandemic, 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 ooh, we better take care of the oil. We better make sure the Saudis are taken care of because after all, we put our hand on their weird orb. <laughs> yeah. There's the Iron Sheik. It's all professional wrestling, guys. All the blustering Russia, China, they take away their citizens' rights. We don't care about their citizens' rights. We care about oil. It's all professional wrestling. There's Donald Trump. It's all nonsense. That's what it's really about. That's what this is about. That's what this is about. That's what this is about. They won't tell you this. They won't uncover. They'll report this little story and that little story, but they won't tell you that's what this is really about. 
It's another reason we need to get off of oil and have a real Green New Deal. It's not going to happen anytime soon because Bernie bailed on us. He was our hope for a Green New Deal. But it's why we need state and local governments to get off of oil. Look at all the look at where look at how clean the planet is right now this last month. And as local governments start facing budget shortfalls because of a recession, because local budgets operate on actual, they don't get uh, just money created like the Federal Reserve just gives, here's money, banks, here's money for this war and that war, and who cares? So this is all the more reason to petition your local governments to go green. Los Angeles has a Green New Deal. It's kind of a fake-ass bullshit one, so make sure they don't just put that bumper sticker on it. But it's all the more reason. Get off of oil. Get off of oil. Don't get off of oil yourself. Because that's what's happening. You won't get that story anywhere else. No one else is going to tell you that. <laughs> Shave your knuckles for justice. Hey, everybody. Like, share, and subscribe. Hit the bell notification button and the subscribe button, even if you've done it before, because they're unsubscribing, many of you, every day. Watch the ads all the way through. If you click skip ad, I don't get paid. Also, support us at patreon.com slash Graham Elwood or rockfin.com slash Graham Elwood. Rockfin.com is a blockchain cryptocurrency platform. All my videos are on Rockfin ad free. Thanks for watching.